wait to get back on the road again. Back again. Dude. Like throw the back home. Back home again. <laughs> back home again. In, in Indiana land. All right, folks, it is team preview season here on Dirt Yard Dish. This the first of four installments coming your way uh, on this episode, uh, the second of the Dirt Yard Dish season, this being season three. We will be going over the season previews for the Outlaws and the Short Shorts. These two teams are slated to uh, open up our regular season play on May 3rd with a doubleheader getting two games uh, in the books. And we'll first start with uh, the Outlaws, who uh, finished last season uh, in last place with a record of 2-20 and 20, and uh, a, one would presume, a first-round exit, and that's exactly what they did against the 8-balls, who eventually made a run to the title series. A uh, couple stats about their 2020 season. They only scored 42 runs over their 22 games, so a little under two runs per game. Um, And they were also 20 runs behind the seventh place team uh, in the scoring category. And the reason their run output was so low was because uh, they had a six-game scoreless streak. Uh, That's right, six straight shutouts, and all in all, they were shut out nine times. So as you can see, the offense was... Uh, the issue for the Outlaws in the 2020 season. Now we look forward to 2021. Uh, There are uh, new horizons looking forward. We're under new management for the Outlaws. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, uh, not to be mistaken with the Green Bay Packers quarterback, and I actually just got a notification as I'm recording this that Aaron Rodgers wants out of Green Bay, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, But Mitch Bias, the Rookie left-handed pitcher has now taken over the leadership role for the Outlaws for the upcoming season. With that change in management, there has been a logo rebrand and uh, new uniforms coming as well. Still keeping the same name and colors, the black and gold with some silver, uh, but kind of giving it more of a a Cincinnati Reds feel, Mr. Red feel, uh, with their rebrand. Uh, With some key player additions to keep in mind for this team, I think this roster is vastly improved uh, from what it was last year. You really had three mainstays that showed up and carried the burden for the whole season and a bunch of, um, I guess, peripheral players that were on the roster but really never made any appearances due to either availability or uh, the long drive to the dirt yard from wherever they lived. And those three players were Rodgers, Bias, and Jay Wilsey. Uh, added to that group, which we know Rodgers will be coming from a longer distance and will probably be only of weekend availability, uh, is Aiden Palmer, the uh, national tournament uh, all-star game MVP one year. Uh, He's just kind of this electrifying arm that really uh, shows out well year to year in the national tournament. Still has to work out some mechanical issues uh, when playing in regular season ball. But he was the first overall pick in our free agent draft that was held in April. And he was just the the obvious choice. Um, He's not only an electric arm, but uh, has proven to be a great hitter as well. Something that this team very much so needs is run support. So you could slot him in the one or two hole uh, immediately and just make him the anchor of the lineup. Uh, a wild card player for this roster, I think, uh, something to consider is uh, Kyle Kortner, who is uh, the second round pick for the Outlaws, uh, possibly a, actually a compensatory pick in uh, losing Kyle Gagliardi uh, to free agency. Kyle Kortner is a young gun, much like Aiden. He is uh, currently playing and pitching for uh, Lincoln Trail uh, out in Illinois, and he will be making uh, his debut and presence fell at the dirt yard come mid to late May. Uh, so he, he's a wild card in the sense that he just saw the league, signed up as a free agent, uh, was one of the first to do so. Uh, he played uh, local high school ball at Cathedral and is from Fishers, uh, just about 30 minutes up the road from the dirt yard. And uh, from everything that we've heard, um, he he's looking like he could definitely be a uh, an additional left-handed bat in the lineup, probably slotted behind 
um, Palmer, and then I you couple him with Palmer and Bias on the mound, the right and the left side. If Cortner can figure out how to throw a wiffle ball, um, and if you're a college pitcher, it usually translates pretty well. If you can hum at 85, no problem, then you just throw a fastball and you make them hit your, your straight stuff and try to time it up. So I think uh, huge question marks there. But uh, I personally, as the Akers manager was scouting him, was uh, making um, uh, some strides towards potentially drafting him. It didn't work out, but the Outlaws get a great get here uh, with their compensatory pick. And as I mentioned, the obvious strength of this team uh, are those arms, Palmer, Bias, Cortner, and then you add Jay Wilsey, who is more of an off-speed guy. He can hit the board. He's got some... Uh, some junk pitches that he can throw, and definitely serviceable. So on any given night, you can have uh, four arms going for you uh, in a, a two-game, uh, three, three-team three round robin or a three-game tournament on the weekends. And the obvious major question, as I've talked about already, uh, is this team going to be able to put the O in outlaws, that meaning their offense? Um, Palmer, again, huge get. At the top of the order, Bias has uh, shown some capability to hit the ball from the left side. Uh, Rogers provides some pop. He's a great slow pitch hitter, so if if he can get into those lob pitch counts after receiving a five ball walk, then uh, he may be looking to add to his home run numbers. He's usually shown pretty well in some slow pitch tournaments. Uh, so what I've got for this team looking forward into 2021, a vastly improved roster. Uh, I. I've got them finishing seventh, uh, and I think they could, if everyone shows, could make some noise or make a team sweat uh, in the playoffs. I know that uh, manager Mitch Bias has said that he would love to get to 10 wins this year uh, out of a 21 to 25 game schedule. I don't quite see that number coming to fruition, but I think it's definitely going to be an upgrade from uh, the the um, the two win season that they had in 2020, and I think they're going to compete more. I don't I don't foresee a ton of uh, shutouts like mimicking the nine shutouts that they were uh, that they put up on the on the scoreboard last year. I think they're going to be able to keep games uh, lower scoring as long as their pitches are in the strike zone, and, and this team is going to compete and do well. So now we move on to the South Side Short Shorts who uh, have been one of the longest tenured franchises uh, in the CCW. Uh, Going to be co-managed again, looks like, by uh, Commissioner Brendan Dudas and Dylan Jones. Cody Fowler was going to take over the managerial duties, but it looks like that has fallen through for this season. Uh, looking back on 2020, though, uh, they finished with a 15-10 and record and uh, were ousted by the Noodlers uh, in an amazing... Uh, three-game series in the semifinals before the Dirt Yard Classic, and that uh, gave them enough for a fourth-place finish. This team started out really hot, I believe like 6 or 7-0. and uh, They won the their pool in the opening week tournament, and they just kind of hit the skids uh, down the stretch uh, as they approached playoffs. Still, 15 wins is, is nothing to scoff at. It's a great season. Um... Uh, but looking into 2021, I think expectations are going to be a little bit higher, even though there are some uh, points of mystery about this team that I'll, I'll tell you about. But uh, moving forward into 2021, they have gone through a rebrand like the Outlaws. Uh, they will be getting new uniforms and have updated their logo to a cleaner, uh, more script look, a little more simplified with the short shorts, a little away from the, the cartoon style logo. We're excited to see what those uh, will turn out like. Uh, as far as new players to this team, not a whole lot has changed. Uh, the biggest name that was added was in the first round of the free agent draft, which, mind you, those teams that are at the uh, top picks of the draft, they're usually selecting as just bodies that are going to be available to play uh, every day or at least very frequently and consistently. These teams that were like competing for championships last year and are intact for the most part, they can take advantage by using their draft picks to select out-of-town players uh, that have signed up with our free agent form 
And uh, we've had players from Northwest Indiana, uh, St. Louis, and all around the country who want to just come out and experience the dirt yard in CCW in regular season. So with all that buildup, the short shorts selected Spencer Bogad of Skibby Wiffleball fame, and he's been uh, just an elite-level player who's been a, a thorn in our side at, at national uh, tournaments uh, the last couple of years, whether it be with his bat uh, or in the field making uh, amazing defensive plays. And I do have it confirmed that he will be available for the opening weekend tournament, the first one of the season. And uh, just as an insight into eligibility for playoffs with our league rules, uh, Spencer will have to compete in three different days of CCW play to be eligible. So it's quite possible he could attend all three weekend tournaments and then try to show up for a playoff run. But uh, ultimately, I think these guys that come from uh, far away will be just helping uh, their team uh, add wins, build up wins, and uh, help them climb the standings. Uh, during the regular season and help their seeding come the playoffs. Uh, a wild card player to consider this season uh, is Keegan Coy. And normally I wouldn't say that, uh, but we've got some recent health updates and injury news in regards to Keegan. Uh, in, within the last month or so, he injured his shoulder on a, in a Lyme scooter accident uh, in downtown Indy and has MRI results forthcoming. Uh, I have talked with him personally and just asking him what kind of level of pain he's in. And he it's definitely noticeable discomfort when swinging a bat uh, recently. And so we'll see what comes of the MRI, if he's going to be able to, to compete this season or he's going to just have to take a few weeks off to heal uh, and rehab. But uh, that that's really the only reason why he's a wild card. He... Last year had an amazing resurgent season uh, after coming off a season of struggle with the Moonshots in 2019. He transferred over to the Short Shorts, uh, his his familiar friends of the Short Shorts, and he showed out. He really did. Um, it was Keegan Coy's revenge tour, and he took revenge on the league for sure uh, from an offensive standpoint. Uh, but it, it begs the question, if, if Keegan isn't going to be available is this kind of going to just be a, the 3D lineup of Dudas, DeHart, and Dylan Jones? And uh, those three are still uh, no slouch. They can hit it with the best of them. This team just rakes from top to bottom, and that's historically always been their strength, uh, is the offensive side of the game. Uh, and just to give you an insight into some really interesting 2020 statistics of the, the main four hitters on the squad, uh, all four of these guys, Dudas, DeHart, Jones, and Coy, all had double-digit home runs, at least 10. They all had ranging from 43 to 52 hits uh, on the season. They all had ranging from 29 to 32 RBI. And probably the most fascinating part was the total base range. Uh, it was anywhere from 86 to 89 from the four of them. And each individual player had... One had 86 total bases, another had 87, another 88, and another 89. So top to bottom, you kind of have, have a well-balanced kind of murderer's row type lineup where it is comparable to the moonshots. Uh, obviously, you have the juggernaut hitter and Will Smithy at the top of the lineup that you have to get through uh, and sometimes work around, and all the other hitters are definitely quality, even to great level hitters in that lineup. Uh, but you're, you're, most of your focus and energy, when you're pitching at least, is going to be put on Will Smithy and making sure you're not misplacing a pitch or leaving one over the plate. Uh, this team, however, with the balance that they have, if one guy's having an off night, you know that the other one, two, or three are going to pick up slack. And throw in uh, Jerry Sprinkle, who is mostly a pitcher, he could still hit when he was inserted into the lineup, and he showed some good numbers and limited action at the plate. I am curious, though, how our new strike board uh, dimensions are going to affect uh, this team in particular. One would think a smaller strike board would benefit hitters and uh, hurt some pitcher ERAs, and then obviously leading to more uh, lob pitch at-bats after a ball five walk. 
it, it remains to be seen. I know this team and and somewhat struggled with the slow pitch and adjusting to it. I know uh, that Dudas himself and others would kind of just be a little uncomfortable adjusting from a fast pitch coming in uh, in your strike zone and then having to almost do the the double tap with the lead foot, trying to get your timing down with a pitch that's floated in. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I think they're going to manage it better, better this year. Uh, they've been playing in slow pitch turners, should have a better technique for it. And uh, Dudas is coming off a year where he was recovering from knee surgery, and I think he's fully healed. So he should be back to his elite level hitting ways, which he batted 400 last year, but his, his power numbers were, were notably down. And so we'll, we'll see uh, what he's going to be able to do in the heart of that lineup. Uh, I think the big questions, other than Keegan more so being a wild card, but the question here is pitching, and that's always seemingly been the question for the short shorts. Uh, they may need to be a little more reliant on just eating innings and winning slugfests. Uh, guys that used to throw more frequently like Dudas and Jones, they may be asked to. Uh, DeHart is definitely serviceable. He didn't get as many innings last year, uh, but he can step in and throw from the left side. Uh, and the reason this is going to have to be the case is because uh, we just don't know of Sprinkle's availability with him coaching baseball uh, for a local college and then also for a summer team. Uh, this wasn't an issue last year during the pandemic and things being shut down. So uh, remains to be seen how available he will be. And then you throw in the loss of Cody Fowler, who was a midseason trade acquisition for Aiden Palmer. And you add their innings up, and the short shorts have lost potentially 100 innings of pitching from the year before, which is a vast majority of the season's innings. If you're playing 20 games at six innings apiece, you do the math, and it's it's near 80-85%. So uh, with all that being said, there's a lot of kind of things hanging in the balance, uh, some injuries they're going to have to work through. Uh, I think as a as a prediction for this team, based on what they're losing and what they're bringing back, uh, I, I still have them pegged in a top four position. They are uh, seasoned veterans, uh, elite level hitters. They're always going to be in ball games because they can hit, uh, and uh, I, I think they w- wouldn't be a surprise at all if they find themselves in the Dirt Yard Classic, um, which I know they're. Uh, deeply coveting and really wanting to to add another uh, mantelpiece trophy uh, to the short shorts legacy. So fourth place is what I have for them uh, with a high ceiling potential to win the whole whole dang league. So uh, that pretty much wraps it up for this first episode of uh, the 2021 season team previews. I will let you know that aside from that May 3rd matchup, uh, at the dirt yard between the shorts and the outlaws. These two teams will get a two-week break after that, and uh, they'll be in different pools on May 16th for our opening week tournament. The shorts will be playing at 10 a.m. on May 16th in Pool A, and the outlaws will also be in Pool B starting at 4 p.m. on May 16th as well. So uh, we've got coming up next in our uh, episode two, of the team previews of CCW, the Pork Pistols, and the Eight Balls. So please stay tuned to our upcoming episodes. That'll be uh, installment two of four for our team previews, and we'd love to uh, get your insights and input, whatever you think. Get at at us on Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok, whatever. Hop in our comments. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, But please continue to lock in with us here on Dirt Yard Dish for the rest of the season. I can't wait to get back on the road again. Back again. Like front of the back. Back home again. Back home again. In. In Indiana land.